Avatar The Last Airbender was one of the best cartoon TV series ever made. It was set in a world where people are born with the power to control different elements, either air, water, fire or earth, though many are also born without these powers. And there is one person who is born with the power to control all four elements, and that is of course the Avatar. Now this is a being who is reincarnated into different bodies when he dies and acts as the sort of spiritual leader of the world. And in the show, the current avatar is Aang, who sets out with his friends to bring peace to a war-torn world and balance between the elements. And this group was known as Team Avatar. And this video is going to go over the possible lantern cores for Team Avatar. Now before we begin, for those who don't already know, lantern cores are organisations that have rings that give their wearers superpowers and they are powered by different emotions. And in order to wield one of these rings, you have to have a strong connection to the emotion that powers it. And these different lantern cores are love, fear, avarice, will, hope, compassion, and rage. And they're also the lantern cores of the black lantern core of death and the white lantern core of life. And the newest lantern core of the ultraviolet light, Though no one knows exactly what emotion powers this particular lantern core, it is believed to be shame. And with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Aang Now Aang is the avatar who is the bridge between the human and spirit worlds. He can suffer mortal injury and die, but when he does die, he is merely reincarnated into a new body. And he is the only one who can wield all four of the elements, marking him as the most powerful human on the planet. And as such, being in the White Lantern Core of Life would make sense, as he is an eternal being and insanely powerful. But I think there is only really one choice for him, and that is of course the Blue Lantern Core of Hope. As the Avatar is a symbol and inspiration to the world, they stand between the nations and ensure balance between the elements and between the humans and the spirits. Aang's job is literally to be a beacon of hope to the world and to protect those around him. And he has been doing it for centuries in literally hundreds if not thousands of bodies. And of course his personality is very much like those that the Hope Lantern Corps chooses. They are very spiritual and very into meditation, which is what Aang is all about. And Aang never gives up hope. Now that being said, it is true that he originally ran away from his destiny when he found out he was the Avatar, and that's how he ended up getting frozen a block of ice for a century. But this was a one-time knee-jerk reaction, and things just went wrong, he never actually planned to be frozen in the block of ice. And as soon as he gets out, he does go back to being the Avatar. It does take some help and a bit of a push from his friends for him to fully embrace this role, but when he does, he never loses hope again. Even when he's facing the Phoenix King on his own, even though he didn't even think he would win and would most likely die, he still went because he knew he had to be there because he was the avatar and he had hope that in the moment he would actually be able to do it and find the inner strength to be evil, which he actually did. And in doing so, he brought balance back to the world, just as he is supposed to. So for me, this one is a no-brainer. He just belongs in the Blue Lantern Core of Hope. I mean, he just does, and you all know it's true. Katara Katara is a passionate and kind person who cares about all of those around her. She acts as a kind of mother and emotional coach to the group, and she's always there for those who need her and always offering support. And for that reason, she has to be in the Indigo Tribe of Compassion. Now, some might say that there are moments when she snaps at the group, and she does argue and snap at the group quite a lot. But everyone has their moments where they have different emotions. This isn't about being compassionate all the time, it's about their dominant emotion. And I think for her, there really isn't any other choice. I mean, one could maybe try to argue that love is her lantern core, as she does have a lot of love in her. But I'd say that's still a weak argument, because what she offers to the world more is her compassion, as she cares and understands those around her. And one of the best examples of this is when she's locked up with Zuko, who has been their enemy up until this point. Zuko has been hunting her and her friends across the whole world, desperately trying to capture Aang, and not really caring whether the others live or die, and he came very close to killing them on quite a lot of occasions. In fact, the first time they met him, he threatened to kill everyone in her village if Aang didn't come with him. And yet, despite all of that, after sitting down and talking to him, hearing his story and understanding his life and his pain, she's actually prepared to use her special spirit water to help heal his face. Now, she can only use this once, and it's a very special item. It's actually one of her most precious possessions. And yet, she is prepared to give this up to sacrifice it for her enemy, 
someone who, as I said, has hunted her across the planet. And I think you'll agree that that is nothing but pure compassion. I mean, some people might say it's naive, and okay, it kind of is. But at the same time, it's incredibly compassionate, and that's what we're talking about. And Katara is like this throughout the whole of the show. So I think you'll agree that she has to be in the Indigo Lantern Corps. Zuko. This one is pretty obvious. I mean, from the very beginning, we see nothing but a seething rage from Zuko. Though, as we learn about his backstory, we do see why. I mean, his father actually used to say to him, My father says she was born lucky. He says I was lucky to be born. Which pretty much shows that his father never cared about him. He only cared about his much more talented sister. Basically, there isn't any unconditional love there. There's quite a lot of conditions. He only loves the best. Now, to be fair, his mother did give him unconditional love but then she died. Although as we learn in the comic, she actually sacrificed her life to save Zuko's, and she actually wasn't dead, she was just sort of in hiding. But even so, Zuko then grew up without his mother, and only had his father, and his father actually seemed to hate him even more, even forcing him to fight him in arena for no reason, other than he'd annoyed him a bit in a meeting. And basically, he just wanted to beat his son up. And then when Zuko refused to fight his father, as he loved him too much, his father then decided to burn off a portion of his face. I mean, this is some insane level of child abuse. But it doesn't end there. After this, his father decides to banish him and gives him an impossible task to achieve because he doesn't actually want his son to return. He is so ashamed of him, he just wants him gone. I mean, talk about adding insult to injury. So we not only see where Zuko's rage is coming from, but I think we can all agree that it is 1000% justified. Now, towards the end of his story arc in the show, he does kind of overcome this anger and learn to be a more calm and balanced individual. In fact, when he overcomes a lot of his issues with his father, he actually loses the ability to properly firebend, as it was his rage that fueled his fire. And though he does later find some new fuel for his power and stop being so dependent on his anger, I think that anger is still there, waiting below the surface and ready for him to call on it when he needs it. The only difference is that instead of the rage controlling him, he controls his rage. So even at the end, I think that, that rage is still there, and it still marks him as a Red Lantern Court member. Now with that being said, he did overcome his rage, so you could argue that he's now in the Hope Lantern Court, as Hope has pretty much been established as being the opposite of rage, at least in as far as the Lantern Court mythos goes. So I will admit that Hope is a possibility for him at the end of Season 3. But personally, I still feel like the Red Lantern Corps is right for him, even at the end. But you may disagree, and I admit that hope could work, so this really could go either way. Sokka Now, unlike the rest of Team Avatar, Sokka has no superpowers. He can't actually bend any of the elements. But he makes up for this with his mind, coming up with attack plans and strategies to win the day. Now, he's quite goofy and silly at times, but his greatest strength and greatest quality is his ability to assess a situation and see the best way to handle it. Now, he may not outright be the team's leader, but he is the one who forms all of their strategies when they go into battle, or even are just working out how to achieve a goal in an episode. So for me, that signifies that he belongs in the Green Lantern Corps of Willpower, as he has the will to not give up, and to use his mind to work out how best to turn a situation to his advantage, which is one of the best qualities a human being can actually have. And perhaps the best example of his willpower is that, as I said, he doesn't actually have any superpowers and can't bend the elements, and yet, he is still considered an equal on Team Avatar. And time and time again, Sokka shows us that you don't actually have to have superpowers to do great things. You just have to have the willpower and the drive to do them. And if you do, then you can accomplish any goal that you set out to. How are you going to fight without your bending? <gasps> ah! I seem to manage. Like I said, he could easily give up. These people have amazing bending powers, and he doesn't. And yet he still carries on regardless, so he definitely belongs in the Green Lantern Corps. Toph Toph is blind, and her family has always seen her as weak, as a precious little bird that needs to be put in a gilded cage for her own protection. Yes, I've let you have far too much freedom. From now on, you will be cared for and guarded 24 hours a day. And she hates this. My parents don't understand. They've always treated me like I was helpless. So she set out to be a badass, and let's face it, she does achieve this goal. But she also tries a little bit too hard to be strong and independent. But nevertheless, this tough and intimidating personality that she has does mean that she qualifies for the Fear Lantern Corps, especially when she's grown up. 
And let's face it, Toph would absolutely love the idea of being in the Fear Lantern Corps. And good guys have been in this corps before. I mean, in the main DC universe, both Wonder Woman and Superman have both wielded Fear Lantern rings, so it could work for her. But I think I'd rather see her in the Life Lantern Corps, as she was born blind, which is a perfect reason to not explore and travel. I mean, it's a golden excuse. Not to be a dick and all, but if you can't see, well, let's face it, going to see famous sites just doesn't work. I mean, you can't really see the Eiffel Tower, so what's the point in going there? But even with this golden excuse to stay home in a big mansion and just live her life there in luxury, Toph decides to throw caution to the wind and to travel the world and have amazing adventures. She doesn't even have any apprehension or anxiety about it, which is incredibly impressive. In fact, out of all Team Avatar, she actually seems to care the least about having to leave home, all of which shows how she can embrace her life to the fullest. And while it is true that all of Team Avatar have left their homes and they've all achieved amazing things, Toph really has the largest handicap in being blind. And in some respects, she actually achieves the most. Well, to be fair, Aang and Zuko probably do achieve the most since they end the Great War and bring peace to the world. But Toph invents a whole new form of bending. No one in the thousands of years of this world, including every Avatar who's ever existed, could bend metal. And yet Toph found a way which really marks her as the most powerful earthbender on the planet. And it's actually an incredible achievement that would forever change the world. And it changed earthbending forever, even leading to the next avatar, Korra, learning how to metal bend. So it's actually an insane achievement when you think about it and what it means for the future of this world. And it's a legacy that will last for all of time. So life works for her because she just grabbed life by the boulders and went for it. And I think it would suit her best out of the lands and cores available. And that is the Lantern Cores for Team Avatar. Do you agree with my choices? Or would you go with different Lantern Cores altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with who else you'd like to see a Lantern Core video on in the future. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.